You've seen the thumbnail, you probably know what this is about, and I know what you're thinking. Dude, this game is like a bajillion years old. And to that I say, shut up, your parents probably hate you. Also, for legal reasons, this is a joke and I actually think you're really cool. Please keep watching the video. Hey fellas, I hope you're all doing well, because I sure I'm not. The game I'll be covering today is not only a pleasant surprise, but a pretty solid horror experience all around. You've already read the title, so there's no point in hiding it. Today, we're talking about the Bad Apple of the Five Nested Candy series. Or, well, an impressive Rico of it. I'm talking about none other than Five Nested Candy's DOS, Sugar Rush. That is quite the title. Let's get into it. Sugar Rush is a fully reprogrammed and quote-unquote upgraded version of the original Five Nights at Candy's 2, developed by Emil Mako and released all the way back in 2016. This remaster is actually a sequel to a recode of Candy's 1, both developed by Bobby Gamer 12 Now, if you've been a part of the Five Nights at Freddy's fangame community for long enough, you've probably heard of Candy's, but just in case you haven't, I'll give you a quick recap, as well as a summary of the original FNAC 2. Five Nights at Candy's is a fan game series developed by Emil Mako. It is one of the oldest and most iconic fan games in the history of the franchise, and one lucky enough to be a part of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative. There are currently three titles, with a remaster of the first game from 2019, and two upcoming ones, FNAC 4, a spin-off game, and the highly anticipated FNAC 4. Thanks to the fanverse, alongside these new games, we'll also be receiving some official remasters of the previous titles. Candy's 2 specifically is mostly known for its repetitive, kinda boring and somewhat broken gameplay. But before we get into that, let's look at what the game is about. Five Nights at Candy's 2 takes place in 2007. You play as the daughter of the first game's protagonist, Marilyn Schmidt, who is forced to spend five nights in an abandoned factory after losing a bet with her friends. The same factory appears in the post-night cutscenes of Candy's 1, although the part we see in-game is a different area of it. In Candy's 2, we face off against the now-withered animatronics from the first game, luring them around the warehouse of the Robotics Corp factory. The main gameplay mechanic are the phones that you can ring around the map through the cameras. You can use them to lure Candy, Cindy, and Blank, or to scare off Chester whenever he's trying to enter a vent. Alongside them, you have the Penguin, who essentially works like Phantom BB in FNAF 3. There's also a flashlight mechanic to look down the hallway in front of you, but it's kind of useless. There's also an additional boss knight against the rat and the cat, who utilize the same mechanics as the other characters. Now, what does Sugar Rush change? I'm glad you've asked, random viewer who is totally paying attention. Sugar Rush changes almost everything, while still keeping the core mechanics. Cindy works more or less the same. You can lure her using the phones if she's in a nearby room or in the central hall. The main difference here is that you can only ring the phone of the camera you're currently watching, with the addition of a timer that will lead to said phone being temporarily disabled. This is a change I've suggested myself on multiple occasions, and I'm happy to say that it works wonderfully in the game's favor. Chester is also the same as the original, which is probably for the best. Again, the main difference is that you can't just randomly guess the room he's in by ringing every phone. The penguin is a lot more aggressive, but also a lot easier to find. When you see a camera icon glitching, it means he's in that room. If you click on it, he will immediately crash your systems. Candy is probably the most unique. He will appear in the center hall in front of your desk. You'll need to flash him repeatedly until he's completely gone. If you ask me, this is precisely what the flashlight mechanic needed in order to be, well, actually useful. And finally, Blank. Oh boy, this guy is something else. He will spawn on the opposite side of the map and will slowly make his way to your office. You'll need to keep him as far as possible by luring him with the phones. If he gets in the central hall, you won't be able to get him out. He's essentially a glorified FNAF 1 Freddy, which is terrifying when combined with Cindy. Add the fact that Candy forces you to look at the hallway, the penguin temporarily taking away one of your cameras and Chester distracting you, and you have a genuinely challenging, fun, and scary game. The rat and cat mechanics have also been remixed, but I won't spoil those in this video. In addition, the game now features a settings menu, and some slightly upgraded visuals. I'm not sure whether it's the fact that this game has a proper 4x3 ratio, or the subtle filters on the cameras, but my experience has felt a lot more claustrophobic and anxious than the original game. I highly recommend that you go and play this yourself, it's fantastic. You may question the morality of remastering another fan game, which is already getting a remaster, but I'm not really the judge of that, nor should my opinion matter to you. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.
back to the void I go.